Today, I'm going to take you on a relaxing walk in the woods as we look at one of my favorite Oathbreakers from War the Spark. A lot of people think he might be weak, but I'm going to make a mean deck out of it. Hello, Oathbreakers, and welcome back to the Signature Spellbomb YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about a Jang Yugui Wildcrafter deck that I have built. This is one of my favorite decks, and I've even played it in streams on the channel. So let's just get into it, and I'm just going to go through this card by card with you. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. So Jang Yangu Wildcrafter cost two and a green. Each creature we control with a 1-1 counter on it has tap, add one mana of any color, and then we can minus one him to put a 1-1 counter on one of our creatures. Now, he does only have a starting loyalty of three, so it is important to keep that in mind, but we are going to be leveraging his ability along with his signature spell, Burst of Strength. Burst of Strength is actually kind of the outline for what the deck wants to do, and we're going to see how it works with the rest of the deck as we move in. For one green mana, we put a 1-1 counter on target creature and untap it. There's going to be a lot of modifying going on in the deck, but we aren't going to be leaning too heavily on that mechanic except for one particular card. Our first creature in the deck, just going to kind of go in order here, is Agave Printed, uh, Progenitor Ooze for 2 and 3 green. It is a 2-2 creature with Storm. Um, any tokens made of it aren't legendary, and when it enters the battlefield, it enters the battlefield with 1-1 one, one counters on it for each ooze we control. One of the goals in our deck is to produce a lot of mana, and if we can spend all that mana and have a big turn, we can end up with some huge agave oozes. Ave oozes, sorry. <laughs> agave, like the cactus. Next, we have Armorcraft Judge. For 3 and green, it's a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, we draw a card for each creature we control with a 1-1 one, one counter on it, and we've seen our... Planeswalker and our signature spell are both going to help us make this a big draw card for us. Champion of Lamholt for 1 and 2 green is a 1-1. One, one. Creatures with power less than its power can't block. Creatures we control. Period. Uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we put a 1-1 one, one counter on Champion of Lamholt. It's a really good idea for the late game. We depend on evasion to get our creatures through on each opponent to win. To try to get Champion of Lamholt to not just stick on the board but to get as big as possible so we can guarantee our damage. Copperhorn Scout says whenever we attack, we untap each other creature we control. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 green. It is actually pretty amazing in this deck, but once we kind of get into our mana ramp creatures, I think you'll see why. Dusk Shell Crawler for 1 and a green is a 0-3. When it enters the battlefield, we put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. Doesn't say whose, so that's something to keep in mind for political issues, um, just in case it comes up in a game. Each creature we control with a 1-1 one, one counter on it has trample. Again, this is to help guarantee our damage gets through, because that's really important. This is an aggro deck. Gyre Sage for 1 and a green is one of the first creatures that's going to kind of illustrate the point I'm trying to make with the deck. It is a 1-2 one, for 1 and a green that taps for an amount of green mana equal to the number of 1-1 one, one counters on it. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, if it has a greater power or toughness than Gyre Sage, we put a 1-1 counter on it. We're probably not going to get to use the Evolve mechanic very often, and you're going to see this of other creatures that are very similar to Gyre Sage in the deck where we may not be able to use their extra ability, but simply just pumping them up and getting them big can generate us a crazy amount of mana. It's also important to remember we have a signature spell that not only puts a 1-1 counter on, but untaps our creatures, which can create turns where... We tap the creature, uh, put a 1-1 counter on it, generate the mana, untap it, and now next time we would tap something like Gyre Sage again, we're generating more mana than we did previously. So we can actually ramp out by modifying our creatures. Heron Blade Elite for Tuna Green is a 1-1 Vigilance creature that we can tap to add X mana of any one color where X is its power. Whenever another human enters the battlefield under our control, we put a 1-1 counter on it. Elysian Keratid for one in the green is a 1-1. One, one. We can tap and add one mana of any color to our mana pool, or if we control a creature with power four or greater, we can add two mana. Incubation Druid for one in the green is a 0-2 with Adept. The first time we use Adept, we can put three 1-1 one, one counters on it if it has no 1-1 one, one counters on it. 
every tap it, we can add um, one mana of any type a land we control could produce. If it has a 1-1 one -one counter on it, we can add three mana instead. So we can actually play this, not ever pay its adapt, just use our commander to put a 1-1 one -one counter on it, and it will now start tapping for three mana, which is a huge change, and it will allow us even to play our signature spell more than once. So one of my favorite plays is to start out strong, drop our commander, and then just start to generating that mana and are play, playing our signature spell over and over again, it will really surprise your opponents. They'll think this is a weak deck, and then out of nowhere, you'll have some big creatures on the board. Cubris Harvest Celebrant, cost X and two green, and enters the battlefield with a number one one counters on it equal to the mana that was spent to cast it. So even if we pay zero, it'll enter the battlefield with two one one counters on it. We can remove a one one counter, to prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn to another creature with a 1-1 one -one counter on it. So Cubris is a great uh, protection spell for everything else we're running in the deck. And it's important to think about that because there are multiple protection spells to help keep our battle plan operational and running in this deck. Next we have Leaf Can Druid. It's one in a green for zero or three. It taps for one mana. If we control four more creatures, it taps for two mana instead. Loyal Guardian for four and a green is a four, four trample creature that at the beginning of combat on each of our turns, if we control our commander, we put a one, one counter on every creature we control. This is a house. <laughs> You're not gonna get it every game, but when you do get it, it makes a huge difference. Marwin the Nurturer for two and a green is another one of these creatures that taps for amount of mana equal to its power. Whenever an elf enters the battlefield under your control, you put a one, one counter on her. Renata called to the hunt for two and two green is a demigod with power equal to our devotion of green and other creatures we control enter the battlefield with an additional one one counter on them. Scribe Ranger for one and a green is a relatively old card. It is a one one flash flying protection from blue creature. If return a first recontrol to its owner's hand, we can untap target creature. We can only activate this ability once per turn. This is kind of a really fun combat trick in and of itself because we can spend the one in a green to get it down. If a blue creature is attacking, we can certainly block it, but we can also return a force we control to our hand as part of this to untap our biggest creature and block and kill something. So it can really surprise opponents and sometimes even blow them out. Scurry Oak for two and a green is a one, two with evolve, which says whenever a creature with greater power or toughness than it enters the battlefield, we put a one, one counter on it. Whenever one or more 1-1 one -one counters are put on Scurry Oak, we may create a 1-1 one -one green squirrel creature token, which is pretty awesome. It does allow us to go a little bit more wide with our strategy. A Somber Rural Sage for 2 and a green can be tapped to just to add 3 mana of any one color to our mana pool. We can only spend this mana to cast creature spells. It's most of what we got. Tuskard Captain for Tuna Green is a human warrior. He's a 2-3. that says each creature we control with a 1-1 counter on it has trample, and it can outlast for one green, and that just allows us to put a counter on it, which is pretty awesome. Wild Beast Master for Tuna Green is a 1-1 that says whenever it attacks, each other creature we control gets plus X plus X till end of turn, where X is its power. So between Wild Beast Master and our different creatures that will give all of our creatures trample if they have a 1-1 one, one counter on them, we can kind of make a makeshift always enforce overrun effect, which is incredibly intimidating. So if you get the right pieces down, don't be surprised if suddenly the other players notice what you're doing. Hunter's Prowess for four and a green. It says until end of turn target creature gets plus three, plus three and gains trample. And whenever a, this creature deals combat damage to a player, we draw that many cards. This is an amazing way to draw up a whole bunch of our deck and be able to just have a really big turn. Shamanic Revelation for three and two greens is we draw a card for each creature we control, and then we'll gain four life for each creature we control, power four or greater. Spinning Wheel Kick for XX and two green is a sorcery. We deal damage equal to a creature's power to up to X target creatures and or planeswalkers. This is kind of a mini board wipe and the more mana we have in this deck, which we will generate plenty of, trust me on that, the better this card gets. Inspiring Call for Tuna Green is gonna let us draw a card for each creature we control with a one one counter on it and then make all of those creatures indestructible. Great protection spell for our entire team. 
Silt Guard for X and a green puts a 1 1 counter on up to X target creatures we control. And then Ors, Equipment, Modified Creatures all gain Hexproof till end of turn. So this is a great protection spell that if we have the mana, we can also pump our entire team, which is amazing, or up to our entire team. Stony Strength for one green is just another copy of our signature spell, but in the deck, we put a 1 1 counter on target creature and we untap that creature. Sun Spinnerets gives target creature plus one plus three and puts a reach counter on it and untaps it. I know that's a lot to do, but sometimes just blocking flyers is really important. Cameo Safekeeping, target permanently controlled gains hexproof and indestructible and can't be target meh and indestructible till end of turn, which is just amazing. We will also gain two life, but that's not really why we're here. Oop, that moved you just a little bit. Rahun's Cudgels for one colorless has pay two colorless mana until end of turn. Equip creature gets plus two plus O, oh, where X is the number of times this ability has resolved this turn. So some quick math is this gets insane fast. When we have enough mana and we don't have to tap or, tap or do anything with the creature to do this, when we have enough mana, the first time we activate it, it gets plus one plus O. Oh. The second time it gets, it's now up to plus three plus O. Oh. The Third time we activate it, it's now up to plus six plus O. Oh. So you can see how this gets crazy. The fourth time we activate it, it is now plus 10 plus O. Oh. So it does not take very long because of how this uh, just kind of incrementally goes up for this to become insane. Yeah, so. Swiftfoot Boots is getting in here to uh, one, make it easier for us to attack or use the activated abilities of anything we have that taps for mana. But that Hexproof is also very nice protection. Um, Romantle is part of an infinite combo in the deck. You can make any creature in the deck that taps for at least three mana infinitely big. If any of your creatures tap for th more than three mana because they tap for uh, mana based upon their power or the number of counters on them, you can actually also generate infinite mana. This equips for zero. You can move it around to your different creatures if you need something to untap everything suddenly. Very good card in the deck. Is very powerful. The deck doesn't need it to run, but I would say it's definitely a worthy upgrade if you're building this deck out. Curse of Bounty costs one and a green. We enchant a player. Whenever that player is attacked, we untap all permanents we control. Each opponent that would attack the player also gets to untap their permanents. So what we do by playing Curse of Bounty is we put a target on somebody else's back and anytime anybody attacks them we're going to get a benefit including ourselves so it does help us because we're also going to basically be able to swing at them and then have makeshift vigilance so something to think about you do want to choose your target player wisely because if they don't seem like a threat to the rest of the table then this kind of just backfires you can enchant yourself if you want to be cheeky instill energy is a very old card that I love. Uh, enchant creature. The enchant creature can attack as though it has haste. If we pay zero, we can untap that creature. We can only use this ability once each turn. The ability to untap our creature at instant speed <laughs> in a deck where tapping our creatures generates us a crazy amount of mana is amazing. So this could be very helpful in having some very big blowout turns. Jugen defends the temple. Uh, on one, we create a human monk that taps for green. On two, we put a 1-1 counter on up to each of two target creatures. And on three, it transforms ooh, into Remnant of the Rising Star. It is a flying 2-2 that says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we may pay X. If we do, we put X 1-1 counters on that creature. As long as we control five or more modified creatures, Remnant of the Rising Star gets five, five, and trample. So this can be a 7-7 seven, seven flying beater that guarantees a lot of the rest of our creatures are going to be just huge and dangerous. Nature's Chosen for one green, enchants a creature we control. We can pay zero to untap that creature. We can only do that once a turn, or we can use this to tap a creature to untap an artifact creature or land we control. So this is a very multi-use thing, but generally we're going to want to put it on our biggest creature that taps for mana equal to its power. Suddenly this stopped working. A Roaring Earth for one and a green is a relatively new card. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we put a 1-1 counter on target creature or vehicle we control, or 
We can pay X and two green and discard it to put X one one counters on a land we control and it becomes a zero zero green spirit creature token with haste till end of turn. So this can be amazing either way you play it. I prefer to play it as an enchantment whenever I can because those one one counters can add up quickly. Season of growth for one in a green. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, we scry one. Whenever we cast a spell that targets a creature we control, and we are going to be casting our signature spell pretty often, we get to draw a card. This extra card draw, especially when we have the mana for it, can help us do some crazy things, including, like I mentioned earlier, maybe storming out with our ooze. Spider Umbra for one green, says target creature gets plus one, plus one, and reach, and has tome armor. Reach is good on this card, but it really is also here just to protect whatever our biggest beater is that generates mana. And now let's get into the lands. Blighted Woodland and Myriad Landscape are both in the deck. The main reason they're both here is they are ramp in our mana base. You may not think we need the ramp, but they do work with Roaring Earth to allow us to put extra lands on the battlefield and get extra triggers. Furl Thicket enters the battlefield tapped. When it does, we can look at the top five cards of our library. We can reveal one basic land card from among them and put that card on top of our library and we put the rest on the bottom. This is just a really good way to guarantee our land drops if we don't think we're going to be able to set up our creature ramp. Um, I'm thinking about pulling it out of the deck. It's worked fine for me so far. Let me know what you guys think on that. I'm, of course, running a bunch of force. Here's the Myriad Landscape I mentioned a second ago. It's a little bit better for us than Blighted Woodland because the cost is lower, but it does enter the battlefield tapped, so that makes it a little bit slower. Rogue Passage is mostly in here to guarantee we can get that damage through I mentioned earlier. And then, finally, we have Treetop Village and enters the battlefield tapped. We can tap for green. In a pinch, we can pay one in a green to make it a 3-3 three, three green 8 creature token with trample till the end of turn. This is more just another one of those surprise things where people may not realize we have a creature to block with or a bigger creature, and we do. Being able to put some woman counters on this as well is good because it'll be a creature during our turn, but not on their turn unless we decide to make it a blocker. So making this big and it's a trample creature the one since it's not a creature usually when people would play play sorcery board wipes it's generally protected and that's actually the whole deck believe it or not um i'm a big fan of this deck it is generally one of my favorites i've played multiple times um it's not the most expensive deck to say the least um my version is pretty close to 40 dollars. it's 37.65 i think that's quite doable for most uh, Magic the Gathering players, but there are certainly key cards you can take out to help you save on that money. It is something you could probably build for as low as like 11 bucks. It's just uh, like Umber Mantle pushes the price. Other cards to think about for upgrades, I would definitely say there is uh, Kadama of the West Tree. It says whenever modified creature you control deals combat damage, you can you know ramp a land out of your deck directly into play. Tapped, that's amazing. So there are a couple things that the deck would love to have added, but, you know, your budget may vary. Having said that, I want to thank my patrons for, oop, my patrons for helping to support the video. I want to thank my subscribers for always being here. Uh, recently, I am doing a deck giveaway. We had, uh, we hit 300 subscribers, and I decided to make a deck for one of our subscribers that I will give away. That video will release in a couple days but I kind of want to make sure that the winner is happy with their deck first. So that should be coming out very soon. If you want to see that video, please subscribe. And I will put a video up here oh, in this corner <laughs> so that uh, if you do want to subscribe, make sure you don't miss that video. You can. Thank you so much for stopping in. And, you know, I do hope you have a great rest of your day.